Welcome to Alternate Endings. Half audiobook. Half podcast. Full apocalypse. On this episode, we bring you a short story about a possible fate of the human race. This story is titled Resolution End and was written and narrated by our very own Tyler Chrisley. It's been over a century since the last great war, and just as the United Nations promised, they have now released the transcript of their final meeting. For some reason, beyond my knowledge, the president has chosen me to read the document that somehow resulted in a population decimating war. Would our forefathers have decided the same? This new document may leave us all wondering about our place in this world. My name is Arlo Dark, here on PBP Network, your worldly news source. Although the document is not in its entirety and heavily redacted throughout, I shall be reading it for my first time with you today. I've been given the opportunity to be home with my loved ones while doing so. I hope you shall do the same. The preparation I've been put through before today's reading is enough to make me wonder about the contents of this release. I tell you as a person, and not a reporter, I am anxious about what we are all about to learn. The following will be excerpts from the 100th Plenary Meeting of the General Assembly at its 109th session. The date has been removed, but we all already know when this took place. The President. I shall now put to vote Draft Resolution A-109-N slash slash as a whole. In doing so, I may remind our Council today that this vote needs two-thirds to pass, as it pertains to the maintenance of peace and security for the world at large, sparing the needs and preferences of individual countries or governing bodies. A recorded vote has been taken. In favor. Afghanistan. Albania. Algeria, Andorra, Angola, Argentina, Armenia, Australia. Um, the list continues for a while, and for the sake of those listening, I'll just skip to the end of this list. I can assure you for the amount of countries present and the vast size of this list, the majority of the votes were in favor. Against. Canada, Jamaica, Lebanon, and Qatar. Abstaining. Netherlands, Russia, Switzerland. Draft Resolution A-109-N slash slash as a whole was adopted by 150 votes. The President. I shall now call on those representatives who wish to speak in explanation of vote. I should like to remind representatives that this meeting will be open for all to speak, but I ask for you to do so in a systematic and efficient manner. I'm going to take a second here to let this sink in and get some of my initial personal thoughts out before we get into the meat and potatoes of this transcript. I can only imagine the air of this room that just came to agreement for whatever halted most human life on earth for 100 years. I picture silence and a pungent sense of doubt from many of those in favor. There's no way they could have known what would come from a single resolution in their hour of need. I mean, I could be entirely wrong, but I get the feeling that many of you listening would have to agree with me. But all right. I suppose, let's continue. The President. First to speak will be the United States. Thank you, President, and the United Nations Council. Many of the nations here today have had key input and revision into the resolution passed today. I personally want to thank everyone involved. While this vote was no easy task, it is easy to see the light at the end of this tunnel. The human population is currently 9.8 billion, and that number rises every minute. Regardless of efforts made by top scientists, many of the problems attached to the population continue to plague the earth. All attempts to create a sustainable supply chain for food and clean water has found no success. The drop in emissions has reduced our carbon footprint, but even that has plateaued at a point that is teetering on catastrophic for the longevity of the human race. These problems can no longer go unanswered if we are to survive. What is shared today will be kept secret from the world regardless of our ethical considerations in doing so. We have decided to take the fate of humanity into our own hands, at the cost of billions of human lives. The resolution is titled End, and this is fitting for the cause, a war to end suffering now and for generations to come. Temporary suffering will be sustained in wartime as we pass through chaos into a more realistic future. Ladies and gentlemen, 
We all remember those schoolyard games we played as children. Two captains lead a team selected through round robin. At the end of this meeting, after all who wish to speak can, we will elect our so-called captains and commit to a draft to select the two sides. This is a time for everyone to start anew. Any previous grudges are erased, and only the basic human instinct to survive will matter. Rally your troops, put out your casting calls, and prepare for war. Three months from today, sirens will signal the beginning of a new world, a saved one. If you need remembering why we vote on this matter today, look at the only planet we have ever known. Ask yourself, which is more important, your flag or your planet? Okay, okay, okay. Pause for a second. Holy shit, am I understanding this right? Some real backyard bullshit was how they decided to save us? Turn the countless lives that were about to be lost as some sort of game for them to look back on so proudly? Fuck that. Fuck them. I... I... I'm sorry. Back to the manuscript. First, there are ground rules that must be laid out. Nuclear war will not be the answer regardless of whichever way the tides tilt. And to ensure so, all current devices will be gathered in Antarctica and locked away, each side containing a separate lock and key to ensure no use of any atomic weapons of any kind. Any attempt to build new nuclear weapons or use of hidden ones shall result in an immediate halt to the war and utter destruction upon said country or countries. Regardless of loyalties, any nation threatening to use nuclear weaponry or employing any nuclear weapons will become an enemy of the world. Second, once you have been chosen, you cannot switch sides unless a trade is agreed upon in the three months leading up to the day we begin. Anyone who faults in upkeeping Rule 2 shall meet the same fate as Rule 1. Once war commences, no allies shall change allegiance. Lastly, once data suggests the population has fallen below our recommended target, all fighting must be halted immediately. Our governments will make amends, and those who survive are the ones named victorious. Anyone who faults in upkeeping Rule 3 shall meet the same fate as the previous two rules. Applause. Canada. This is bullshit. Pardon my language, President, but how unreasonable can we be here? This is absolutely the easy way out, and the possible benefits are not even proven. How have we been coerced into a mega war that once again will benefit only the major powers? Regardless of how our nations are divided, the small will be destroyed while the strong reign supreme in the ashen world that remains. Notice the size and population of the few nations strong enough to vote against this evil. It is no coincidence that the countries not in favor of this vote are small in military force. Shame on all of you. Shame on this council for allowing the destruction of our people to become the answer for world population. All these so-called rules benefit no one but the rich and heavily armed, leaving those suffering countries to continue a fate towards death. You are cowards. Because of this vote, there is no going back, and you've all made a terrible decision. I question the competence of this General Assembly here today. If no vote shall be taken on that, then I wish to suspend or beg you proposers. And by the way, listeners... This part is difficult to all get out. So many country names have been redacted. In this part of the document, more lines have been redacted than are still included. I can only guess that the U.S. were the original proposers based on the initial statement, but who actually knows? Okay, the, the transcript continues. Um, beg you proposers to allow another vote on this matter. Two-thirds of you today must have the desire to give our people more time for another solution. President. I will allow the motion for a revote if two thirds agree. Those in favor, please stand. The motion has been denied with 96 of 157 in favor. Canada, you are fools. Stubborn, dead fools. For those of you victorious in this disgusting matter you have agreed upon, may the planet herself never forgive you. Wow. I cannot believe the vote came that close to giving each nation another chance to take back their horrific vote. 96 of the 105 people needed. It was that freaking close. I mean, how could they not see the possibility for greater evil than this mass casualty war? They argued it would improve our planet's health. And look at where we are now, sectioned into mountain towns and remote villages in order to stay in safe zones. Steady supplies of filtered oxygen and hazmat suits to travel. I mean, look at that vote. Russia abstaining? 
How does that not scream red flag to everyone else? They had no intention of following the rules, and the rest did nothing after the fact. One Western nuke was all that they needed to finish the body count, and everyone was okay with that. I mean, fuck. We don't even really live anymore. Yeah, we breathe, eat, and shit, but what is that without true freedom? I can even look outside my window without seeing the aftermath of a war raged a century ago. It was reckless. It was stupid. It was moronic. It was a waste. I cannot... What? What, love? Oh, I apologize for my rant. It's I'm just heated. It's my wife so kindly reminded me. It is my duty to get this report across to you all. I apologize for reacting and injecting my own rage. We have all been dealt a shitty wasted hand by people who were scared to act rationally. The following sections are heavily redacted and I don't even know how to share it. It looks like Russia spoke for a moment and I see words like ruthless, survival of the fittest. And interesting enough, it does show their speaker's final statement. It is our duty to ensure this great nation's survival and we will do what we must. Now, obviously this has to be translated, so who knows if nation was what they meant or if it could have been world they wanted to say. But to me, it seems like the cherry on top of the Russia isn't going to play fair Sunday. And remember, this comes after a motion for a second vote. That was already denied. And Russia voted neutral in this matter. Just a reminder. All right, now, next goes to Iran. And just to backtrack a little bit more here, every name has been redacted. The only thing it shows is which country is speaking most of the time. I mean, makes sense that they avoid adding names for their future family, safety, and whatnot, but I wanted to give you a clear picture of what I'm reading to you. Iran. The time has come. Our nation was hesitant when asked to co-edit this resolution. The Quran tells us to act peacefully and with sincerity. We did not believe a planned war would allow us to act faithfully to Allah. Islam means submission to God. Only after true revelation from Him have we found our inner peace in this act. We believe earth will benefit and only find its peace through this conflict. He is the compassionate and the merciful. The only mercy we can afford is one where those who survive can live in wholeness. China The population in the East rises faster than anywhere else in this world. The laws and regulations of leaders before us have failed and let us down the path we stand on now. We stand by our vote and the change that will befall us. We do not wish negatively for any individual country in the upcoming events, but instead desire a sacrifice for the overall benefit of the globe and humanity itself. Japan. The answer is so simple. Eliminate the primary cause of dysfunction and order will be achieved. Humanity needs to be humbled even more so now than we ever have before. And we have concluded the Great War is the only way to do so. Top scientists have not been able to solve the puzzle of our salvation. We must take it upon ourselves to create a better life for those who come after us. There are too many people, plain and simple. Sacrifice is no longer a choice, it is a duty. Egypt. To the victor belong the spoils. Greece. To the victor belong the spoils. India. To the victor belong the spoils. Italy. To the victor belong the spoils. Ukraine. To the victor belong the spoils. Now, uh, that's just creepy. I have to skip a little bit because the next page is literally just this phrase repeated by dozens of countries. It's robotic. Perhaps countries had pre-planned allegiances before this meeting and were signaling their alliances. It's so obvious to me that puppet strings were being pulled by someone and there are too many suspects to count. And, well, wait, the last one is different. Switzerland. They see nothing wrong in the rule that to the victor belong the spoils of the enemy. If, if I remember this is actually the full quote. When taken out of context, it seems menacing, like a rallying cry. But the whole sentence takes on an entirely different meaning. It's a clapback to whoever was behind this. They stood up for the world and look at what happened to them. The first to go. The epitome of peace and neutrality obliterated because they wanted no part in this game at hand. Hell, they even abstained. They literally wanted nothing to do with the vote. A small country had the guts to stand up and were punished for it. Ugh. 
Israel. Conflict between our neighboring countries has gone on for more than a thousand years, and we have the means to end it. Put aside our differences and, depending on the draw, fight side by side for a better future. What a beautiful thought, my friends. We no longer need to barter for our immediate survival. No religious qualms, no border disputes or hate crimes. A future with peace and prosperity, dictated by those whose glory propels them beyond the Great War. President, do we have any others who wish to speak on their vote? All right. The remaining pages, which I will say is a vast majority of this transcript, are all blacked out. Whatever occurred in those waning hours of the meeting are gone. Did Canada fight back once more to plead their case? Did the United States or Russia reveal secrets that few seem to know? I wish more than anything I could paint a picture for those people who doomed humanity to its current state. For all we know, the remainder of the final plenary meeting of the United Nations was spent choosing teams. Trust me, using the word teams to describe allies in an agreed-upon war that would happen in the near future has twisted my stomach. War isn't a game, and all they did was boil it down to one. A game for the future rulers of a bleak world rotting in waste and destruction. When this opportunity was first brought to me, I turned it down. I didn't think someone like me could do this reading today any justice. As the days wore on, and night after night I laid awake trying to figure out a way to properly give you all an answer you've so desperately deserved, I finally made a decision. It had to be me, and I couldn't stop there. I have to paint the picture. If it can't be of them, then I knew I needed to paint their aftermath we all must endure now. The following are excerpts from various accounts during the Great War written by soldiers, politicians, national leaders, and members of the media. Names and organizations have been redacted. Only the dates remain. June 27th. The world is in utter chaos. There seems to be no real method to the fighting, and my unit has been to four different countries in the last month. One fight starts, and as soon as a battle is won, then it's on to the next place. There isn't a town to take or objective in sight, just bloodshed. Somehow I'm the only person alive from the original group sent to Asia. Every time we go out, I just hope the next heavy artillery strike finds me. God save me from this endless hell. December 1st. I think last night I hit the 100 mark. Who really knows if it's actually more, since you can't really count the drone strikes. I somehow managed to avoid any conflict in Georgia before my mom turned me in, and they sent me out. She said if my dad and sister were somewhere out there, then I needed to be too. Fuck. I mean, they were probably already dead by the time she said that. I know they are, because no one survives this. Next group, come on in. Line them up, then shoot them down. September 10th. I lie awake at night knowing why I have to order the deaths of men and women I do not know. This order does not make it easier. It has been explained to me why this war will make the world more prosperous many years from now. But these days, that isn't visible. I order my captains and generals to commit random, heinous violence in the name of elimination. Not of an idea, not of evil, but of people. Just people. Their existence is to be ended. And that is it. I have contemplated my own suicide for some time now, and who knows? Perhaps we were right to kick off this war. Perhaps we were not. I suppose all that matters now, for me, is my place in this fight, and my ability to survive. If tomorrow will be worth living, what should I do today? January 1st. Last night I overheard a conversation between my superiors. They spoke nothing of battle plans or next steps, just head count. Whatever they're being told to do, only numbers matter. I wish I knew why, because I'm getting really tired of this. War is not a numbers game, is it? I'm cold and hungry. My brothers and sisters in arms are cold and hungry. You know, the sound of 25 people crying themselves to sleep every night sure as hell beats the gunfire during the days. If anyone doubts it, stay a night in our camp. I hope they know what we're doing. April 3rd. Baby, I love you. I don't know if this will ever get to you, wherever you are, but I love you. May 22nd. Unit 1, under fire. Unit 1, under fire. I repeat, we've been flanked from both sides and are stuck in this tunnel. 30 are wounded, and 14 is dead. This is it. All right, men. Ready yourselves. Only one way out. To the victor belong the spoils. 
June 13th. I shot him. A man stumbled into our building already bleeding from his leg. He sobbed as he turned the corner and he saw us standing there. He begged me to help him survive and promised to watch my back in return. His eyes were stained red and his face was half covered in mud. He reached his hand behind his back and before he could return it, I put a bullet square in his chest. He fell with a letter in his hand and hit the floor at my feet. I shot him. July 16th. The last time I was in Japan, I was 19 and living with a host family. While the people mostly kept to themselves, they were still kind and welcoming. I wish I had spoken more Japanese than the basics. My best friend was the man upstairs, a little bit older, but already full of stories to tell. Now I sit on the corner of my old block, and all that remains of my old building is rubble. I have no ill will towards these people, and their eyes reflect the same. Yet we drop like flies, days in and days out. Is there an end besides death? I may soon know. Every single one of these letters or recordings have been found in the last hundred years since the end of the Great War. There are millions of recordings from people in the various conflicts, living the decisions of the world's supposed leaders. I found thousands of them online within a day of searching, and to be honest, I didn't know if I would share any of them. But what I read today, and why this all occurred, required me to do so. The honest truth of war. Now, I only have one more I feel like I need to read to you. It's a little long, so bear with me. But it's the last recording I leave you with here today. There is no date or address for this account. I was brought into this world not of my own accord, but of my parents. I have noticed in my many years that life has a way of reminding you of this fact. Not necessarily relating to my parents, rest their souls, but of the natural order and the way things flow. We don't get to make every choice. And life sure as shit is not fair. Choices will be made for you whether they are right or wrong, and you will make them for others. When I was 16, I did not choose to have my car rolled 60 feet, but the drunken man in the car behind mine did. When my mother was 45, she did not choose to be diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer, but her body did. When the planet breathed fire and temperatures soared, it did not choose its fate, but the people who infect it did. People can do such good, and yet the bad finds its way. This war was chosen for reasons unbeknownst to me. While the war was brought upon this world not of your or my own accord, but of its parents, we have the ability to stop it. My childhood self does not, my mother does not, this planet does not, but here we are fighting against people we will never know for a cause just as foreign. We can rise tall. End the fighting that plagues our land and join our hearts and minds to create a better future. Just as my 16-year-old self did, we can survive. Just as my 45-year-old mother did, we can survive. Just as we can make sure our planet does, we must continue to survive. Focus on the bright light ahead and hold tight. We will survive. We must. There is no other choice. Hurry now, before it's too late. The first nuclear bomb was sent from Russia to the United States on October 23, 2062, 12 years after the war had started. Six billion people perished in a period that could have seen 1.5 billion born. If only the council that voted on the measure to begin the Great War could see where their deceit landed the planet. Would they still vote the same? We cannot know, but we could hope not. That doesn't matter now. The world and many of its people were decimated underneath a vote from a group of people in the same room. The absurdity sickens me. I have nothing else to add for you today. Besides wishes for hopeful recovery towards a brighter future, the leaders of our past don't deserve. Thank you for your time, and I wish you and your loved ones a safe evening. May you take this new knowledge of what created our current world and use it as you desire. For me, I am unsure. I am angry and sick about the decisions that built this great war. In blunt terms, fuck the people who voted included in this matter. But now, with this new knowledge, we must attempt to make our current world a better place. After knowing the horrors of the road leading us here, at minimum, everyone, I wish you the most important thing of all. Something we needed much more of in the vote that decided our collective fate. I wish you love. More love than I could give. Signing off, this is Arlo Dark.
thanks all for listening. Check out the next episode where we discuss and review this story. We hope to see you there, as long as the world doesn't end before then. We would like to thank Kevin McLeod for his music found on incompetech.com.